five pieces built in Inventor. And you know, it's usually helpful. You should have your puzzle cubes glued together, but you might be able to get the plastic pieces. It helps to have the actual cube in your hand to assemble. Some of you all can see it, and that's great, but if you're struggling, that's one of the first things you do. So you take a look at your puzzle cube, and you sort of pick out which piece is your foundation piece. In other words, which piece is sort of the biggest, clunkiest, takes up the most space, solid base piece. So with this guy right here, I'm going to pick my green piece as being my base piece. So that's the piece I'm going to start with. So the first thing I do is after opening Inventor, I go over here and I'm now going to be doing an assembly. And I'm just simply doing a standard assembly. So I open up the assembly file and wait for it. You also want to make sure your little white cloud of happiness, mine's not very happy right now, but your white cloud is so you're syncing and you want to make sure you're working in the project for your puzzle cube. So here's my assembly. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm over here to place. And I hit place. And I decided my green piece was my foundation piece. So I find my green part file. And hey, there's my green part file. It looks a little different because in the puzzle it's arranged like this. In my drawing I did it like this. But that's okay. So I, um, whew, it's falling down on me. So I, that's what I want. I hit open, and that piece is now open and locked. Now, if you notice, I get this little ghost piece here. Sometimes, like if you're making something, it has ten screws. It's the same part. So if I had ten of these in here, I could click it ten times and it puts it down. I don't, so I just hit escape. I've got the one piece. If you take a look over here on your um, browser menu, do you see how it has a little thumbtack in there? That's because this piece is anchored. It doesn't move. Now what I mean by doesn't move is you see how I'm clicking it and dragging it and it doesn't move. Now, if I click on the menu item that says free move, what that's saying is ignore all the constraints and let me move it, except for it's not. I can also spin and rotate it, but this sucker is locked down. So that's how we're going to be building our puzzle cube. Now I need to put the next piece in. Some of you all dump all of your pieces in and assemble and that's fine and that just doesn't work for me. So the next piece I'm going to put in is um, this guy right here, my red piece. I hit open and I put it in. And the trick with assembling is to not be afraid of zooming. So right now, my red piece is not constrained. That means it has six degrees of free motion. Now that's six degrees. Everyone should kind of be cluing in, taking note. Six degrees. You have your x-axis linear, your y-axis linear, your z-axis linear, and then you can also rotate around your x, rotate around your y, and rotate around your z. That is all the ways this little guy can move. So if I want to rotate him, I can uh, sit here and rotate him, and all the, there's rotation motion and free move. There's all the directions he can move. Constraining it means I prevent this motion. So I want to put this puzzle in how it goes with this piece. So we're going to do constraints. With constraints, we have a couple of different types. We have the mate constraint. That's like glue. You have two kinds. You have mate. That's where it puts it face to face, like it's kissing. And then we have flush. That's where you put it side by side. So it's like you're standing shoulder to shoulder with someone and your front lines up. That is flush. You can also do extra, uh, constraints with angles. You can also do constraints with inserts. And you can also do it with symmetry. For the puzzle cube, we really only need to use the mate. Underneath the offset, if you're wanting to put a little bit of distance, that's what the offsets want. For the puzzle cube, we're not wanting any distance. All right, so for this guy over here, cancel this right now. I know, here's my, um, I'm going to go home. All right, so there's my green piece. And this little guy right here needs to set on top of him. And it kind of helps if you set it up how it's supposed to look. So this little guy right here is supposed to sort of set on top of him like that. 
So what I want to do is I, you want to use as few constraints as possible, but you're going to need at least three constraints for it to be fully constrained. So I hit constraint, and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a flush mate, and I'm going to take this surface right here, boom, and I'm going to glue it to that surface right there, boom. And it makes that noise. I hit apply, and it's now stuck. So what that means is this guy has some movement, but he has to stick where that green and red plane are kissing each other. So the next level of constraint I'm going to put is I'm going to do this side right here with this side right there. And I hit apply. And once I hit that, if you take a look at it, you can see how that looks right. And when I try and move it, I can move it that way, but that's the only way I can move it. So it's still not fully constrained because I can move it. So the final thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use the flush one. I take those two surfaces and have make them flush with each other. And now when I take a look at this, that piece is locked down and it does not move. So that piece has now been constrained.